That's right. Now, I wanted to take, a, we begin a new year and just kind of remind us of a truth and encourage us, okay? So, turn this on. i uh, got to click out of that thing. Um, but we've looked at this for, for like years now, but uh, Proverbs 1, the beginning of wisdom, the begin, uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so what we've done, guys, is I've emphasized this illustration so many times, you should all know it, right? You guys know it? That the world, we tend to think we have light in ourselves, that we can figure things out, we can figure out right or wrong, we can figure out knowledge, why we're here, things like that. And I've tried to emphasize to you that that's not how God's Word describes us. God's Word describes us more like uh, an electric lamp, not an oil lamp. We don't have within ourselves what we need. We need to plug in to God's revelation, okay? And so I've emphasized that again and again and again, that truth. And these verses should about have them memorized, right? Uh, Psalm 36, verse 9, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. See, in God's light, we have light. Psalm 119, 105, very familiar. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And so if we're, if we're not connected to God, if we're not in God, where are we? You're not in the light, you're in the dark. And so I try to emphasize, guys, it's just a recognition that we're, cre we're created beings, we're creatures. God's the creator, we're creatures. There's a God, and you ain't him. And so that's why it's so to we're so dependent upon God, His Word, for knowledge, for right and wrong, for, for literally everything. Now, um, and so that's why, guys, we talk about being in the light. That's why I'm very encouraged, having talked to many of you guys, that so many of you guys have committed, again, to being God's Word every day this year. That, those, uh, Dave, David mentioned about uh, uh, you know not being beyond uh, uh, making commitments to be better people. And as Christians, guys... It's so good to be in God's Word. Not some legalistic checkbox, but guys, for what it does. And so I want to encourage all of you uh, uh, in, in various Bible reading plans. Many of you guys read together. And so I want to, us to encourage us on why this is so important. So uh, here's a passage. And, and all I want to do is help you guys to see why we need to be in God's Word regularly. Uh, Jesus said this in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5. He said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So we can see, guys, how much Jesus valued the law and said if anybody relaxes one, even the least commandment, he's least in the kingdom, right? And so we see this throughout the Bible. Psalm 112, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, that's the beginning of now, and who, who greatly delights in God's commandments. And it's not just an Old Testament thing. Paul says that, that love is the fulfillment of the law. Or John here says, for this is the love of God. What is? That we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. And so, guys, God's commandments are so key because that's what God's will is. We know what God's will is because of his commandments. Now, when we talk about what God's will is, here's a commandment in the Bible then. And the pig, because it parts the hoof, and it does not chew the cut, is unclean for you. Their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. How many of you guys had ham the last month? Huh? How many of you guys had bacon? Oh, yeah. Okay? So my point is, is there's this dilemma. Jesus said whoever relaxes the least commandment is least in the kingdom. And yet Jesus declared all foods clean. Wait a minute. He relaxed the commandment, didn't he? Is Jesus least in the kingdom? Do you see the dilemma? I'm not going to solve it for you, okay? But the point is, is some people say, well, that's just Old Testament. Old Testament doesn't apply. Number one, don't do that, guys. You're, you're going to neglect, you know, three quarters of your Bible of God's Word. We don't want to do that. But it, it's not just a simple, easy thing, okay? Think of this. Don't answer out loud, probably. But whisper to somebody. Think through. I'm not going to answer these, okay? But I'm just going to look at one passage. And just ask yourself, which of God's laws apply to us? Okay? And, uh, and my point in this is to stir up good conversation at dinner. Sunday dinner should be lively this afternoon. Okay? And to help us to think through how, how not knowing God's word can create issues. So, this is just two passages, two chapters, one basic passage in the Bible. 
So think about it. Does it apply to you or not? You can whisper to your sibling or your parent next to you. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. There's technically three there. Does that apply to us? There's next one. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. For kids, that's should boys marry boys? Or is that an abomination? Does that apply to us? Okay, notice Leviticus 18. So we're, we're in Leviticus 18 and 19. You shall not round off the hair on, the, on your temples or mar the edges of your beard. Now most of you guys are looking at me thinking, he thinks it applies to him. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me if I do. Okay, I don't. But anyway, okay, the point is, does that apply to us? I mean, it's the same chapter, guys. Same passage, okay? Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. There's two there. They apply. Huh? Uh, you shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor shall you wear a garment of cloth made of two kinds of material. No cotton and polyester. Okay? Here's my point, guys. And again, I'm not trying to resolve it. This is why we, 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 it's, it's so important for us to be in God's Word, know God's Word. We live in a day and age, guys, that's very different than the day that Mr. Robert grew up in. Okay? And I'm not picking him. I'm just 50. We live in a day that's different than 2018. But anyway, okay? It's very different, guys. Right now, guys, Christi it used to be Christianity was assumed. That even if it was neglected in people's lives, it was assumed to be true and nobody debated. We live in a day and age now where all those verses now are used to attack Christianity. Every one of them are used to attack Christianity. How come this law applies and this one doesn't? And guys, if Christians, as Christians, if we just neglect these things, we live in a day and age now where, where you're either going to be increasing in doubts or, or you're not going to be able to be faithful in, in, in uh, 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 helping people understand the importance of God's Word. And so I say all this to say, this is why we emphasize, I emphasize a lot of apologetics. Apologetics, what is apologetics? Teenagers, remember? You guys are all saying it differently, but you said it, right? Apologetics is knowing what you believe, why you believe it, and being able to effectively communicate that to others. So that's Boyd Bakken's definition. It's just the definition we use. But the point is this, guys. There's two huge uh, benefits to apologetics. Number one is evangelism. People don't take the Bible as a, as a given anymore. It's not. It's not a given. Now, you can't persuade. You can't. Uh, 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 reason somebody into the faith, but guys, God uses those arguments, so we need to understand and know God's word if we're going to be faithful to share the gospel in a culture now that hates Christians, hates God's word. Okay, and the second thing it does, guys, is it helps us to to uh, uh, be uh, 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 grow up in the faith, to be able to be able to uh, uh, withstand attacks. And see, that's why two things, then, when we look at God's Word, number one, 1 Peter 2, verse 2, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it we may grow up to salvation. Guys, it is crazy if you just stop and think that God would ordain that one of the principal ways we grow as Christians isn't by doing some fantastic thing for God, but it's by talking into the air, right? Prayer, okay? Okay? And reading a book that's several thousand years old. It, sounds, it seems so ordinary. Okay? But that's the ordinary means that God grows us up, guys. And that's why it's so important to me. God. So every morning when we read God's Word, guys, we're, we're, we're doing something that has eternal value. The second thing, guys, is in our culture, it's so critical. Because, guys, we are in war. We're not physically persecuted. But, guys... The atmosphere now is literally a war. Listen to Paul's words and encouragement uh, to us in Ephesians 6. He says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. And he goes on to describe what that armor of God is, which includes the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so the point is this, guys. Be encouraged that every time we read the Bible, we're doing something of eternal value. We're preparing ourselves for this battle that we find ourselves in as Christians. So let's pray and ask God to give us grace to love His Word, and to delight in it like we read in Psalm 112. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank You 
for your word. We thank you that uh, you've not left us in the dark, but you've given us your light. Uh, forgive us for so often being neglectful of it, for not knowing it as we ought, and, and even more importantly, for not obeying it. We thank you for Jesus that he came uh, to fully keep the law in our place so that we can be forgiven. But Lord, help us now by the power of your spirit to, to love your word, uh, to know it, to obey it, uh, by the power of your spirit for your glory. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.